Experts from The Economist say the hype, the hype right now, and there is a lot of hype for hybrid cars will not last, and it could be a critical mistake to purchase one. Now, what are the reasons for this? Why are they saying this? One reason could be have a look at Norway, but there's some other reasons as well. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Speaking of hybrids, there'll be plenty of plug-in hybrids and fully electric cars at the Melbourne EV Show, 27th, 28th, and 29th of June. I'll put a link in the description. Would love to see you there. The Economist says the hype for hybrid cars will not last, and fully electric vehicles will win the race, as they have in Norway. The car industry's effort to decarbonize revolves around replacing petrol or gasoline with batteries. A growing number of customers want both, and they think this is a good idea. In some cases, it probably is. In many others, it's not. If you're concerned about resale value, well, keep on listening. Buyers who cannot afford a fully electric car in some segments, or even just buyers that would prefer a hybrid or worry about the availability of charging points, they are turning to plug-in hybrids and some to e-revs, which are similar, sales of which are skyrocketing. But the hype for hybrids is going to prove to be short-lived, says The Economist. Worldwide sales of cars running purely on batteries were more than double those of plug-in hybrids last year. The gap, though, has been closing. Sales of plug-in hybrids were up by 50% year-on-year, largely thanks to China, in the first seven months of 2024, compared with just about 12% for EVs, according to estimates from Bernstein. Now, the truth is that if you look at all of 2024, EV sales actually increased by closer to 20%, but plug-in hybrids increased by much, much more. Car makers have been cooling on EVs, especially in the United States, and warming to hybrids. This month, Volvo actually backtracked a few months ago on its commitment to go all electric by 2030. It now says EVs and plug-in hybrids will together account for 90% of its sales by 2030. A big difference to what they were saying previously. Ford announced it was abandoning plans to make a large fully electric SUV, opting instead for hybrids. Hyundai is doubling its range of hybrids from 7 to 14 models. Volkswagen too has pledged to increase investments in hybrids as it rethinks its plans for EVs. Honda just cancelled its $13 billion EV factory and facilities and investments to go hybrid. Consumers are turning to hybrids partly because they are cheap. The big batteries required to run for electric vehicles make them more expensive in many cases than petrol cars especially outside of China. In China, that's not the case. Outside of China, it is. That's a problem when it comes to selling the mass market. Most buyers will not pay a premium, says Jim Farley, the boss of Ford. Plug-in hybrids, by contrast, run on much smaller batteries. They typically have a 20 kilowatt hour battery, approximately, around a third the size of the battery in a fully electric car. As a consequence, plug-in hybrids are a little bit cheaper than an EV, usually, and a little bit more expensive than a gasoline-powered car, and they cost less to run, at least in the short term, anyway. Although hybrids can typically travel only around 40 miles on their batteries, the option of using petrol avoids the anxiety many drivers of EVs have about running out of charge. Now, obviously, when you actually own one, it's a little different. You get used to it, and you don't have that anxiety. But before purchasing, a lot of people are too scared to make that decision. For their part, car makers are fond of hybrids because they are more profitable uh, and they are similarly profitable to petrol cars. In contrast to EVs, many of which are loss-making. Smaller batteries mean lower production costs. Hybrids also allow legacy car makers to draw more on their existing expertise and supply chains. In some ways, a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid is not really all that different at an architecture level to an internal combustion vehicle. The fashion for hybrids, however, may prove to be fleeting. Rules in California adopted by 16 other American states stipulate that by 2035, only 20% of the new vehicles sold by car makers can be plug-in hybrids. The remainder 
must be fully electric. Europe plans to slam brakes on even harder. The bloc will ban the sale of all cars that run on petrol, including hybrids and diesel, by 2035. And China is phasing out internal combustion even, even faster than Europe is. Hybrids may already be less competitive by then. Battery prices have been falling and will fall further as production expands and new chemistries are developed. Car makers such as Renault have plans to roll out EV models that cost significantly less than their current offerings, spurred on, why? Well, by competition. Competition from China and from Tesla. Charging networks are continuing to expand to the point where in many countries, there is way more DC fast chargers than there are gas stations. Bernstein predicts that plug-in hybrids will capture a growing share of the car market until around 2030, and that sales will then start to decline significantly as EV sales speed up. Remember, by 2030 and onwards, the average electric car will have a range of probably around 400 miles or more than 600 kilometers. And cost no more and possibly less than a hybrid or an internal combustion car. Plus, they'll be able to charge in around 10 to 12 minutes. Hybrids may appear to be winning now, but EVs will win eventually, says Patrick Hummel of UBS, a bank. Xavier Smith of AlphaSense, a consultancy, thinks the obsession car makers currently have with hybrids will prove very, very short-sighted. Those that lose focus on electrification will fall far behind and will be at serious risk of bankruptcy over the next 10 years. Let me know your thoughts. Do you agree? Do you disagree? If you look at Norway, you can see they've phased out hybrids and internal combustion. Almost all cars sold there are fully electric. No one's interested in hybrids. So the resale value of those cars has fallen drastically. The same thing is likely to happen across the rest of the world. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Does this fit with your experience? Let us know what you think. After reading a brilliant article by The Economist, I've been intending to do this video for a while now. Hybrid vehicles are simply a stopgap measure. And I believe their resale value will crash as a result of this. Now, a lot of people don't care about resale value. Personally, I'm not really that worried about it. But if you were to buy an expensive hybrid vehicle, that could be a mistake. In the United States, some experts are saying that it's only a matter of time before the value of not only internal combustion engine cars, but also hybrids will actually plummet.